Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for i5 for the iPhone is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of i5 for the iPhone is brought to you by Audible.com. To download a free audiobook of your choice, go to audiblepodcast.com slash i5. Good people of internet! Hello, I'm Sarah Lane, and welcome to the newest episode of i5 for the iPhone. This is the show for us, the iPhone fans. And every week, we cover five topics from the must-have apps to the news you need to know. But this, this is a special week because we're getting a new iPhone on Wednesday! Well, I suppose Apple could, I don't know, pull something crazy and just not announce a new iPhone during their scheduled event Wednesday at 10 a.m. Pacific. But no, it's an iPhone. Are you getting one? Are you not getting one? Doesn't matter. This episode is designed to appeal even to you Android faithful. Okay, that last part isn't true. Let's start the show. Number one. Even though I love my Apple TV, I really do, I don't really love the remote. Sure, it's small, it's sleek, it looks nice, but the buttons are actually really small. I'm constantly pressing back when I'm trying to press up and I don't really like the wheel, etc. Does this sound familiar? If so, you need Apple's free iPhone remote that can control not only your Apple TV, but also iTunes on any computer on your Wi-Fi network. So let's say you're searching on an Apple TV. It's cumbersome to type from this remote. You hate doing that, don't you? From the iPhone, you're probably already a pretty fast typer. So huge improvement there. Now, do you have a big music collection in iCloud? Play everything from your iPhone remote via iTunes Match. If you have multiple speakers set up, you can control everything independently right from there. And if you're a gesture person, you'll like controlling the Apple TV from here, flicking, dragging, and tapping. It's pretty cool. Whether you're about to upgrade your iPhone or not, remote is a great little utility you should definitely take advantage of. Thank you, Apple. Number two, speaking of Apple TVs, I noticed a strange app on mine the other day called iTunes Festival. Did you notice that? Where'd that come from? Turns out it's an Apple TV app, it's an iPad app, and it's an iPhone app that Apple's providing free for music fans. Throughout the month of September, artists are performing hour plus sets at the Roundhouse in London, and iTunes Festival is the app that's streaming these performances live and offering them on demand for a limited time afterwards. So for example, I missed uh, Dead Mouse Live yesterday, but that's okay, because I can watch the whole show now, where I can look ahead, see who else is playing throughout the month, and set a calendar reminder for myself not to miss Muse playing on the 30th. If you want to know more about an artist, you can click into their profile, read their bio. If you're watching a show and you love what you hear, iTunes, of course, has handy links to buy the album or just a song or two. iTunes is so good at that. We still have a long way to go in September, so if you're a live music fan, but you don't have a very flexible schedule, iTunes Festival was kind of made for you. And because it's an iPhone app and an Apple TV app, I guess you could either airplay right from your iPhone and control it that way, or you could run the Apple TV app and use the iPhone's remote app to control it. The possibilities are endless. Numero tres. Let's talk about American politics. Doesn't that sound fun? No, I'm kidding. I don't want to talk politics with you now or ever. However, I do want to make sure that you know you have a ton of options in the App Store right now, no matter who you support or what your political leanings are. In fact, Apple's put together a collection called Election 2012. You can choose from each candidate's official apps. You can read news and commentary about the election. You can choose apps that provide information on poll numbers. You can download the political time machine to see candidates speak over the years. You could read the Constitution. You can even keep up to date on the congressional record with a daily iPhone edition. You got options. Now, I know some of you can think of at least, I don't know, 450 things you'd rather do than get obsessed about election-based apps on your iPhone, but it's better to have access to more than you'd ever want rather than feel uninformed, right? We'll have a link to the entire Election 2012 app collection on our episode page at twit.tv slash i5. 
This episode of i5 for the iPhone is brought to you by Audible. Audible.com is the leading provider of audiobooks with more than 100,000 downloadable titles. If you're looking for a particular book, Audible's got it all. Literature including fiction, nonfiction, even periodicals. For i5 viewers, Audible is offering a free audiobook to give you a chance to try out their service. One book you have to listen to is A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. You may have heard of him. 13 hours and 39 minutes of pure fun, people. To download this audiobook for free or another one of your choice, just go to audiblepodcast.com slash i5. That's audiblepodcast.com slash i5. Number four. A couple weeks ago, we talked about an app called Well for social lists. And this week, I want to show you Lift for social goals, or good habits as they're known here. You can see I've got a few habits I want to hit today. I want to blog more. I want to drink more water. I want to exercise. I want to skip sugar. I want to stretch. I've got some goals. So let's say I go to the gym. I can go ahead and fire up Lyft, check the exercise box, and share with everybody I'm connected to on Twitter and Facebook that I spent time on this good habit. Now, over time, I'll have a calendar overview of all the days I exercised and invested into good habits. And I can see what goals my friends were achieving, too. Even if you're not much of an oversharer, the motivational aspect of seeing what your buddies are achieving can actually be pretty powerful. And don't worry if you're drawing a blank. The little plus button will suggest some popular habits other people are engaging in to help you get started. If you're not flossing, now's the time, people. It's really good for you. I've heard some people complain that without calendar reminders and alarms, Lyft isn't really very aggressive, which might be true for you. Or you might find after using it for a while, your habits really are changing and you're not annoyed. Remember, that's Lyft with an I. There's another Lyft with a Y, which comes up first in the App Store. I just don't want you to be confused. Finally, number five. Do you ever wish that you could hear your favorite announcer on your favorite sports radio station from your hometown 3,000 miles away, or the local indie station you used to love that featured the best up-and-coming bands? If so, I have a solution, and it's called TuneIn Radio. What it does is aggregate internet streams from radio stations from around the world in a single, easy-to-search interface. You can browse by specific station, or by music genre, or news, talk, sports, even locations worldwide. Save your favorite stations for easy listening later on, buy a song you love more than life on iTunes with just a single click, or discover similar stations TuneIn Radio thinks you'll like. It works with AirPlay, too, so you can send those streams to your home theater if you have one. TuneIn Radio might sound like magic, but there are a few catches. No clear channel stations, for one, because Clear Channel has its own partner app, which is called iHeartRadio. We'll talk about it in an upcoming episode. Sometimes stations don't work. I have found this to be true. Sometimes it's a high volume issue. Sometimes it's just a bad stream. It's not perfect. Also, there are licensing restrictions that sometimes force a blackout of a certain program, even if the station otherwise works fine. Also, finally, the car mode is lame. The buttons are just bigger. That's not actually car mode. It needs to have voice commands, or it's not actually helpful in a car. These are all annoyances, but not deal breakers, because it's a free app, and you're getting a lot for nothing. Oh, and for 99 cents, you can upgrade to the pro version. That's the one that I'm using. And you get pause, rewind, and recording functionality. You can even set up timers to record shows later on. It's like DVR for radio. And who says terrestrial is dead? Oh, one more thing. Last time I showed off my favorite calendar app, Agenda Calendar, and I asked you to help Phil find an app that would help him schedule specific reoccurring dates like the third Tuesday of each month, and I said, Agenda doesn't do that. Well, I've got good news. Agenda does do this. When you choose weekly or monthly repeats, you have all sorts of options. Thanks to all of you for writing in and setting me straight, and everybody else who wrote in with other calendar app suggestions. We should do a calendar app show. Meh, maybe not. And that does it for this episode of i5 for the iPhone. For links to everything that we talk about, to subscribe to the show in HD, or catch up on specific episodes, just visit us at twit.tv slash i5. If you've got a tip, a question, or an idea, email us at i5 at twit.tv, leave us a voicemail at 614 on i5, or send us a video with an app review of your own. I'm Sarah Lane, and I'll see you next week right here on i5.